wheel and one behind the wheel, and they'd all have different, they'd have all different actions. Now I know you have a round loaded in there. I'm going to just talk you through the steps until they're ready to ram the rod in. But when uh, the rod is metal inside so it doesn't cause an explosion and someone comes back to here and they manage this box um, the gunner will call out some type of fire he'll say uh, the range uh, 1,000 yards solid shot and this person back here will actually have a chart in there and some options to pick out of and they'll pick out the right load and the right uh, round and they'll tie it together the bag onto the the wooden part of the round and the steel part to the front. And they put it in that sack and this person is called the powder gun. Now that person is waiting for the command to walk forward. That person has the business, the goods in their hands. Now at the front a person will put a fire will get ten minutes and there is a tool that uh, a person who take and scrape a little wire brush and scrape the hole in which the iron goes to clean it out from the fire. And then they put their thumb over the hole so no oxygen gets in. And then someone in the front would take another tool and stick a metal rod in there. It's a spiral. It's called a worm. And that would be put in there, as this gentleman's doing, to try to get out any debris. You have a hot rag ball. Hold it with string around it that holds the uh, crowd. A lot of times there's a little bit left. When, when the guy gives the, uh, the command, worm, and then the person goes up and worms it, he gives me the command back telling me he's finished. Next is wet sponge. You've got to put a wet mop in the board to extinguish any leftover embers that might be left over that could cause you problems in about five minutes. So he wet sponges it. I, I give him the command, wet sponge, and he gives me the word back, wet sponge. Next guy, dry sponge. You gotta dry it out enough that it's not gonna affect your powder bag on your next shot. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just getting any heavy liquid out. That's what it takes out. There's a lot of steps to doing this. But sponge and dry sponge. Now, what you can do is advance the round. So the powder person advances the round, checks with the uh, person in charge of the gun. They inspect it to make sure it's and then they bring it around to the front of the house and through some very careful protective action stick in the round inside of the front of the else around on the battlefield in line can tell this piece is loaded and ready. The next command is prick and prime. This person takes a non-ferrous metal, usually a brass pick, pushes it in and breaks a hole in the muslin bag. It's our, our aluminum foil bag. So the black powder is now exposed to the touch hole. In old times, they'd stick a fuse in there and then take an ember and hold it on the fuse and it would explode it. We have high technology for 1860. We have what's called a friction primer. It's a little metal tube with some uh, explosive little powder in it with a wire hook to it. And after the prick, she's going to prime and she's going to put, somebody's going to put the primer in the hole. Different crews do it different ways. Sometimes it's the lanyard puller that does it. Sometimes it's that person. They, this person on the right is holding it so it doesn't come out. Ready right. one, ready two, ready three. That is ready, sir. So now, don't until I do it. I'm just going to explain it first. He is now, get, he has the gun now, and he's taking the slack out of the lanyard, 
And the second next step he does is he looks at me as the gunner. I'm the guy in charge. I make a swimming around to make sure the river box is closed and everybody is in a good position. Then I say, prepare. Everybody's out of the way. Nobody's 50 yards in front of the cannon. We're all safe. My eyes are on him. He's only looking at me. And he didn't care about anybody. I didn't say a word, and I dropped my hand. Two battles of the battlefield. You can't hear my big mouth. You'll see my hand. We're gonna, we're gonna let it go now. So protect your ears. Watch the end of the barrel. See the smoke and maybe some flame. Ready? Fire! Assume all those actions were taken care of, that I've loaded it already, I've done my tamping, I am pricking the case. And I'm getting a friction primer out of here. Thank you, sir. That's a fuse. <laughs> Folks at home, we got the fuse for the big one. You know about that in apples. They both use the same friction primers. And that's the fr friction pr that's primer. That's the primer folks. wire. Let me show you a, a live one that has it in the So you have a tube that's filled with uh, some byproduct of black powder and mercury. And then uh, it's uh, glued on there with some, some type of lacquer. And when you pull it, it makes a little spark and shoots it down. Okay, so I've gone through the same drill that I just explained over there, and I have pretend I have nine people on this fixture. I'm closing my liver boxes because that's a good safety thing. My ammo is in the steel one. And I'm in position now, and now I'm hooked up ready to go. It, you'll get a better view. Don't go in front of the lift, but if you can see from the side, this is going to give quite a big, larger report. The fireball in the report is larger on this one because the barrel is shorter. Shoot a 2-inch uh, 357 magnet at night compared to a 7-inch, and the 2-inch is going to have more of a fireball because the, the uh, powder is still burning hot. And that's why this one is more fire. So this will be a little more fire. It might be a little bit louder too. All right, I've done my due diligence. I've followed my National Civil War Artillery Association rules. I've done my good practices. I don't know, I, my wife's name is Nancy. If I don't make it, just let her know, okay? Let her know I think that I'm having fun. The manual for the uh, mountain pallets suggest that the person pulling the lanyard stay on their knees because if I'm standing up and I try to pull this thing, the friction primer comes out. It's just the way it is. So this guy had to get down lower. This is an easier piece to deal with in a lot of ways because you don't have to reach as far to swab the bore and all that. Okay. I'm going to get on my knees. I got the friction primer set gone through everything. I'm looking at my gunner. He's got his hand in the air and I'm only looking at him. There's going to be a big boom. Take care of your ears. Try to watch the end of the barrel. Ready? Fire! That is a misfire. So let me do a misfire drill. Give me a minute. Five minutes, we're going to do a picture drill, and then let's 
Seems like the primer went off, but it didn't shoot the flame down into the bag. three minutes because that's a good time. If it's going to go off, it's going to go off. If it's a malfunction of this and a slow burn for some reason, it's going to go off. Most of the time, if this, this little cartridge is not in there, you're not going to have anything go off. I put that prick in there and it went all the way to the bottom. It just tells me when I pulled, this went off because it had a little bit of a smoke and a little bit of a noise, but it didn't go off and blow the thing down. These things sometimes fail. 90% of the malfunctions of this piece or that piece is from this little guy. And there's been times where we've done it and we've got bad batches of things. Last year, September. last year, Gettysburg, for some reason we had several cans in a row bought them the same vendor. So Have you ever had one fire within three minutes? No. I have had one though. Still in there and it smoldered. Last year, it smoldered and it smoldered and it smoldered. And it's like it out. we ain't getting near that thing. Wow. So we put the gun down. After it was done, it was still smoldering for some reason. Now that looks like it's smoldering, doesn't it? Yeah. It usually doesn't smolder. You know what's smoldering in there is the rice cake. I have a rice cake that I use as a filler, but it usually. When this part is not in there, it's usually safe to go. So we're just going to wait a couple minutes, and we're going to do it again. Now, last year, when it was smoldering, this piece stayed in there. So there is a drill for you to take a pair of needle nose pliers and get in there and try to get that out. If for some reason you can't, that's what your water bucket is for. You're dousing it with water and filling it with the front. You're done for the day. That gun's off the line. Gun's off the line for the day. If you shot 20 shots or one shot, in reenacting, you're off the line for the day because taking it off the line is safer than trying to make it work. So we're going to wait a few minutes here and see what happens. If I get another misfire, then I'm going to dump this barrel out. And if you're around in about 30 minutes or an hour, go see the rest of the show, get yourself a drink or coffee or something. We will fire this many times today. Because I came across this way, over top that uh, barrel, it might have lifted it out at the same time and didn't let it. So I'm going to come from the side this time and totally off of the, uh, the raised part of that. You know what that big ball is called? I can't remember. Cascabel. I have no idea why. When we did our cannon school one time out there in Jackson's Mill, uh, we got quizzed and I was like, all right, I didn't read that. Thing. I was close. I was going to call it okay, Christmas. Okay. All right, let's see if we have a better result this time. Ears, it's going to be loud. Try to watch the end of the barrel. You're, there's going to be a good show in two places, and if you got the whole piece, you might catch it. Fireball at the end of the barrel, and a fire and a smoke coming straight out of here. Cool. The people who get that picture are very lucky because it's just not easy to get. All right, ready? Fire. <laughs> nope. Misfire. It's the charge inside. This cannon is going to be shut down for a little while. I promise you I'll get it back on the line, but there's a little problem down there in the hole. That fired very nicely, at least the primer did. 